So the next uh, topic that we want to talk about are balance laws. So if I want to model a fluid flow, it is based on certain principles, certain laws. And we know a few of them already. For example, we could say there could be mass balance. Or for example, we could talk about force balance. Or for the matter, we could talk about energy balance and so on. So in fluid mechanics, the mass balance leads us to what is called the continuity equation. The force balance would actually uh, relate the force applied on a fluid body force as well as surface forces and that would be the rate of change of momentum. So these lead to what are known as the momentum equation. And they are also referred to as the Navier-Stokes equations. Because these were first derived by these two scientists, Navier and Stokes. So these equations are very special named after them. And of course, we could have the energy equation. Now the energy equation, as you know, uh, would involve uh, you know, something like internal energy, uh, the kinetic energy and so on of a system. So it would involve temperature, for example. In this course, we would be actually talking only about the mechanical energy of a system which would be related to the potential energy, kinetic energy and so on. So it is a, it's a very special case of what one would see in general. Now there is a, so we would like to uh, write these equations for the fluid, but as you are aware that these laws, they are usually for a control mass system. What that means is, if I look at force balance for example, then uh, there is a particular amount of mass that I choose and I try to figure out what are the forces acting on it and that would decide then what is the uh, momentum change to that mass. Same thing with energy, same thing with mass balance. But in fluids, a control volume is more suitable, convenient or suitable. In the sense that I cannot follow a fluid particle uh, from, from the time it starts moving up to the time that I am interested in, that it, it could move quite a bit and to track all that region would not be such a good idea. So I would like to instead keep uh, a small window or maybe a large window and then look at fluid elements that come into it and probably exit that after some time and look at the balance of what happens inside this window. So that is a control volume approach. So an example of a control volume for example would be a jet engine. So here is a cross section of a jet engine where you see this is the cowl. of the engine and you could have some components inside. For example, you could have maybe a compressor here which is driving a turbine and they are connected by a shaft. So they spin together. You could have a combustion chamber. So this is where the combustion takes place. 
and therefore it gives out energy that would give rise to a high speed jet. So, I could have fluid coming in maybe there is some fluid that does not really enter the engine it goes from the outside and then I have some fluid that goes from here. So, I am showing you a jet I am not showing you all the streamlines we now know what streamlines are. Okay, so, they, they could go through some very complicated motions inside. So, I am not showing that, but roughly speaking this is the flow that I could have right. And now, I want to do a control volume analysis. So, what I could do is I could say well instead of following a fluid element that is a control mass and it goes through the entire engine and exits out which would be very complicated. I actually do my analysis on a region like this. So, this here is the control surface that encloses a control volume. So, we are going to use some abbreviations. So, control surface I would usually refer to it as C s and a control volume I would refer to it as C v. Okay. So, the idea is I want to set up a balance law for example, a force balance that there is some force acting on this control volume. It could be because of surface forces like friction it could be because of body force may be gravity or some other forces. And then I would relate it to the momentum of the fluid that comes in versus the momentum that goes out and the rate of change of that. And same thing for energy and for uh, the mass balance. So, I would like to develop a framework that kind of goes from a control mass to a control volume. So, my balance laws are more suited for a control mass scenario, but I want to apply them to control volume. So, I want to develop this framework. So, we need some kind of a framework and this is made possible by what is called as the Reynolds transport theorem. So, this theorem would take a control volume and try to apply these balance laws to this particular uh, control volume and not just to a control mass. Okay, so, so let us let us try to see how it works. So, to illustrate the idea of the Reynolds transport theorem what I would do is let me consider a body this is a hypothetical body which has uh, so, this, this is a control volume that I am considering. And there is an inlet port and there is an exit port. So, I am taking a very special case where fluid comes in through the inlet port and it leaves through the exit port. There could be many inlet ports, there could be many exit ports, but this is a very special case just to show you uh, how this works. I am further going to assume that let n be the unit normal. So, n is the outward pointing 
unit normal. So whenever there is an inlet port or an exit port, I first figure out a normal which is pointing outward. As you know, the surface will have two normals, one pointing inside and the other one pointing outside. So I pick the one which is pointing outside. Then at the inlet port, I could say, well, this is my inlet velocity Vi and this could be my exit velocity Ve. Okay. 